Hello and welcome to another video by Adrian Davy from Pure Electric. This is video two in my transposition series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the formula for mechanical power. I'm going to be transposing that around. If you haven't already watched the first video, I suggest you do that because that's a much easier formula to start off with when you're learning transposition. So click the link in the corner of the screen and that will take you to that video. For those of you that have seen that video, this is video two. And here we've got mass times gravity times distance divided by time equals mechanical power. As you see, I've got step one. And what we're going to choose to transpose is something from the top. So we need to find distance. I'm going to put distance in a circle up there so I don't forget what we're looking for. OK. For those of you that remember the first video, firstly, we need to deal with this fraction and we need to get everything below the line, above the line. So what's the opposite of divide? Well, that's times. So we're going to times the T out. So the T goes up there. At the moment, the formula is unbalanced. It's very heavy on this side. I need to transpose it and get that over the other side. So whatever I do this side, I do that side. Okay. Now I've balanced the formula off again. It's, it's even. However, it looks untidy because I've got times by t divided by t. And if you remember from the first video, this cancels each other out. So we can just remove that. So step two, I'm going to clear up the formula. So we've got mass times gravity times distance not divided by anything is equal to power times time okay now that we've got everything on the same level we can then take out what we want to move so we want to find d i need everything this side of the d gone at the moment, I've got mass times gravity. What I could do is I could put that in brackets, like so, because they're times each other, and I can move all of that in one go. So mass times gravity, if I divide that out, because it's times the distance, and I move that m times g down there, whatever I do this side, I have to do the other side. So divide, and I've got mass times gravity. Okay. Then what I can do is I can wipe out what I don't need to clean it up because obviously that and that cancel each other out. So step three I've got distance equals power times time divided by mass times gravity. I no longer need the brackets. So I can just take those back off again, like so, because I've moved it all in one go, so. Okay. And that's the formula, it's easy, easy as that. Okay, now that you've done that, do that a couple of times, get used to how it flows. The next thing I want you to do is choose something from the top, okay? And then we're going to move that. So let me just rub this off the board. Let's choose T. So up here in that box, I'm going to put T because we already had power when we started. Okay, we need to find T. Well, first thing we need to do is get everything that's below up. Now, again, you can move them one at a time, but I'm going to do it together because they're equal and I just want to get them up onto the top. Okay, so I'm just going to put brackets around that again. And I'm going to move that in one go. And I'm going to need some more space on this side. So that to get up here. I'm going to leave that in brackets, m times g, so mass times gravity, 
whatever I do that side, I do this side. So M times G. I'll leave it in the brackets to make sense of it all. At this point, that and that cancel each other out. So I'm going to rewrite the formula neatly up here. So this would be step four. We've got in brackets mass times gravity times distance equals power times time. Okay. We're looking for T for the time. I don't have T by itself. I'm just going to remove those brackets because they're no longer needed anymore. You can leave them in, it doesn't make any difference because mass times gravity equals force. So that won't, won't make any difference. But at the moment, we've got everything on the same ship on the same level. I'm looking for time. At the moment, I've got time times power. So I need to do the opposite of times, but that's divide. So I divide by P, whatever I do that side, I do that side. Again, it's balanced, but it's untidy. So I just need to tidy it up. Step five, we've got mass times gravity times distance divided by power equals time. And you can keep moving that round and round and round as much as to your heart's content. Keep choosing something off the top line because it makes it easy, uh, harder. You know, you're pushing yourself a bit more and just keep moving that round, picking out different things on the top. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, the second formula that I want you to learn in this video is efficiency. Okay, and that equals output divided by input times 100. Now you'll sometimes see the times 100 kind of in the middle. It's still above the fraction line because it's not a fraction, so it's still up on that level. Okay, so another way of doing it could be to do that. It's exactly the same thing. Don't get confused. So I always draw it like that because otherwise you're going to get confused with what to do with it. Okay, so we've got output times 100 divided by the input equals efficiency. Now, let's find what we're going to find. Let's find, let's find the output. Okay, now just so you know as well, when you're doing your exams and your um, tests and what have you, this is the formula for working out your percentage for how efficient you were in that test. So output, that's how many questions you got right. Input is the total amount of questions that you had. So for instance, if you had a 30 question exam online and you've got 20 of those questions right, well, that would be 20 would be up here for your output because that's how many you got right. 30 would be here because that's how many you could possibly have got right. And then, you know, the total, and then you would times that by 100. And that would give you your percentage because efficiency is a percentage, okay? Right, we're looking for output. Purely for ease, save me writing out efficiency, output, input. I'm just gonna use out for output, in for input, and EFF for efficiency, just to be a bit easier on my, uh, my writing hand. So step one then, we're looking for output, which is here. I can't do anything with that formula until I've removed the input. So let me just make this a bit easier to write. And efficiency. We know it's a percentage, so we don't need that. I need to times the input out because that's the opposite of divide. So let's put that in there. Whatever I do this side, I do this side. 
So efficiency times input. Times input divided by input, well, nothing happens, so I can remove that. And then just to clean up the formula, step two, I've got efficiency times input equals output times 100. From my previous videos, you know that I've got everything on the same line. I can now select what I want to select. So I'm looking for output. Output is here. At the moment, it's output times 100. The opposite of times is divided. Formula is unbalanced, it's very heavy on this side because I've added something extra in, so I want to balance it off. I then need to bring that this side because whatever you do that side, you do this side. This has now balanced the formula up again. However, it looks untidy. So we can clean that up. We can get rid of that and that because they cancel each other out. And then step three, I'll write this out in neat, okay? So we've got efficiency times input divided by 100 equals your output. Simple, right? Now this did take me a long time to learn and I'm not brilliant at it, okay? I'm, I'm just a, an electrician, you know, good with the tools. Maths was never my strong point at school. I think I got a D in maths, it wasn't the best. Um, because I struggled with chalk and talk on a board, you know, learning like this, I struggled that I'm more of a hands-on person. So I feel your pain, but repetition, 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 you need to practice this. You need to practice two, three times a week in the same way that if you wanted to be a professional footballer, you'd be practicing four or five times a week so that you're match fit on the day. It's the same with the science and principles exams. If you want to be match fit on the day, You've got to practice, you've got to stretch your brain, you've got to build it. Your brain is a muscle, you've got to build it up, you've got to feed it, yeah? You've got to keep exercising it. So you're gonna to have to do this three times a week. You can't just rely on that one day a week at college. Just keep getting used to moving these things around. And once you've moved the formula around, pick something off the top again. So I'll tell you what, let's find input this time. So up here, I'm going to put input into my box so I don't forget what I'm looking for. At the moment, I'm divided by 100, so I need to times the 100 out. Just move this over so I've got some space to do that. So I need to move that out. So times 100. Whatever I do that side, I do this side times 100. And again, I clean the formula up. So I no longer need that or that. I've got everything on the top line just to make it look neat so I can follow my steps. And so you can follow them too. I'm gonna to put this up here. So that was step three, step four is cleaning this up. So we've got efficiency times input equals output times 100. Okay. Remind ourselves what we're looking for. Where we're looking for input, inputs attached to efficiency, so the times efficiency, opposite of times is divide. So I divide the efficiency away. Whatever I do that side, I have to do this side. And then I can clean that formula up, or I could leave it like that. I suggest you clean it up. And then set five, we've got input equals output times 100 divided by efficiency. Simple as that. Okay, those are the two formulas that I want you to practice for this video. And in my next video, I'll take you through the next formulas that you're going to need for your City and Guilds exams, first year science and principles exams. Now, I'm guessing that these are going to be the same as the EAL ones as well. So, you know, it's all the same thing. We're just practicing transposition. It doesn't matter what formula you have in front of you. 
the transposition rules are exactly the same. And you know, we're, this is like a level three qualification. So there's only very low level stuff that you have to learn. Okay, I hope that video has been of use to you and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.